See, what's the use of running away from home to go out and start a career? Or are you just trying to prove your superficiality? That's my dad. More than half a year ago, I left my family and went elsewhere to start a career, aiming to prove my competence to them. What about the result? Why are you blaming our son? It's all because of Amber. Mother, Amber did nothing wrong. I couldn't help but raise my voice when she mentioned Amber, my first love. Before that, I was a student at New York University. I went on an internship in a rural area and met Amber, a volunteer from a self-funded organization. I was quickly attracted to her beauty and kindness. After many contacts, I decided to pursue her and soon after, we also officially dated. But good things didn't happen for long when my mother went to see Amber. I thought she would like her as I do, but as soon as she got home, she protested against me dating her. Amber also suddenly said goodbye and completely disappeared from my life. Even though I went and looked for her, there was no result. At first, I didn't doubt my mother, but in one class, my friend told me a story. Steven, are you and Amber okay? We... Couldn't your mother was... My mother? What about my mother? Not too long ago, I caught your mom and Amber in front of the school cafeteria. She looked angry and Amber was crying. I felt like I was struck by lightning. According to her personality, Amber left probably because of her. When I got home, I confronted my mother and we had the biggest argument ever. I forbade you from dating because she wasn't being honest with you. She just wanted to take advantage of you. Don't talk anymore. That's your prejudice against her. After saying that, I pulled the suitcase away and never went home again. I still can't get rid of the pain of losing my lover. To this day, when I'm so poor Ouch. that I have no money left, I throw away my face to return. Let me introduce myself. My name's Steven. I'm a 26-year-old alumnus of New York University. I used to be an all-around student of the school, both famous, rich, handsome, and studying well. Please like and subscribe to this channel to get notified as soon as LDA Life Diary releases a new video. My family only had to arrange a job for me. Because of my good reputation and, and a bit of a connection, teaching is a very <laughs> suitable job. Today is my first day at work. As I turned through the hallway, I bumped oh. into a girl. Fortunately, before she could fall, I caught her. Ah. I'm so sorry, are you okay? She raised her face and as soon as I saw that face, I was so shocked I couldn't speak. She's very similar to my first love, Amber, especially the eyes and the mole under the eyes. Having said that, she backed away from my arms, making me feel a little lost. She ran away before I could settle down and ask for her name. I carried a confused mood and entered the classroom, my head non-stop remembering that girl. Hello everyone, I'm Steven, the school's new teacher, and now we'll start the class with roll call. I turned over the list of students in my class, called out their names one by one, and when it was one's turn, Nina Harris. Yes. The voice was a bit familiar, causing me to raise my head and search for its owner. Surprisingly, I was the girl I bumped into this morning. Her name is Nina. By the end of class, before I could talk to her, Nina had already left the classroom. It wasn't until lunchtime that I saw her again. As I walked into the dining room from the door, I saw her sitting alone in a corner, eating her lunch. I took the tray and sat down in front of her. Hello, do you still remember me? Hello, teacher. No need to be so serious. Just call me Steven. No way. That's fine. Actually, I was looking for you because I saw your student profile. I saw in it that you've won many painting awards and are the president of the painting club at school. That's right. Did you know the Te Amo exhibition is taking place next weekend? As soon as she heard that, her eyes lit up. Yes, I hear there will be many famous paintings by talented authors displayed there. I have two tickets to see the show, but I can't get anyone to come. Besides, I think inviting someone who knows nothing about painting is a waste. Do you want to come with me? If not, I'll have to cancel that precious ticket. I looked at her with an appealing look. Of course, it was just a pretense. <laughs> so, bothers you, teacher. During the following period, I frequently talked with Nina, took care of her, invited her to eat, and made excuses for students to help her stay after school. Sometimes, when she wasn't paying attention, I peeked at her and couldn't help but freak out. Nina had too much in common with Amber. Every time I look in those eyes, I think the person standing in front of me is my first love. My heart began to vibrate violently, but I wonder if I like Nina because she's her or because she looks like Amber. But in the end, emotions still triumphed over reason. As soon as I realized Nina had different feelings from me, I couldn't help but confess to her, arrange a dinner at the luxury restaurant filled with candles and roses. Nina, would you like to date me? I promise I'll be a good boyfriend, always pampering and caring for you. 
Hearing that, Nina looked at me in amazement. I could see with my naked eyes that her face was turning red. A long time after, I heard her respond. I agree. I was overjoyed and pulled her in for a long, slow kiss. After determining the relationship, we were like a picture with a shadow. But every time I think with her, I'm with her, I think of Amber. For example, when we go to an amusement park. Steven, I want a mint choco. Huh? Don't you hate mint choco? Come on, I've always liked the mint choco. I suddenly realized it was Amber who didn't like mint choco. Or you can have the strawberry ice cream. I don't like the taste of mint choco. Um, okay. Later, I found out that Nina didn't like strawberry ice cream. Every weekend, I would take her shopping, choose dresses, bags, and high heels for her. At this moment, Nina came out of the dressing room with the pale yellow dress I'd just chosen for her. I don't think it suits me very well. Besides, the clothes here are too expensive. I prefer to wear sportswear. Don't worry, it suits you well. Then I turned to the store's staff. Pack me all the clothes I've chosen and the dress she's wearing. Steven! Please, wear them often. If you find it boring to wear again, just tell me and I'll buy you a new one. After taking Nina home, I received a transfer notification and a text from her. She said that she would pay half of what I paid her in advance, and the other half, she would transfer next week. I was confused in my mind. I didn't understand why I was forcing Nina like that. She was the exact opposite of Amber. Amber loves to go shopping, and every weekend, she would drag me along and always choose the most gorgeous clothes at the store. Spending thousands of dollars for shopping and not hesitating to swipe my card, she even took it for granted. Hey. About two days ago, I received an appointment from my rich kid's friends. They said they were going to have a party and asked me to bring my girlfriend. I responded without even asking Nina for her opinion. As Amber had always been enthusiastic about attending our rich kid's parties, whether she was free or not. I drove up to pick Nina up and I realized she wasn't excited. We were both the last ones at the party, so there was more attention. As soon as they saw Nina, they couldn't hide their surprise. Why is it like, so similar? They didn't say it in a low voice, so Nina and I both heard them. She doubted and turned to look at me. They're making fun of you. Don't believe a word of their mouths. So the whole group laughed. Unlike Amber, who actively starts a conversation and creates an atmosphere with people, she just sits and limits her contact with others. Even so, the party was very fun. It went on and on, <laughs> until one day, I went to buy Nina a cake. As soon as I walked out of the store, someone hit me hard. As a result, the cake box fell to the ground and was shattered. The girl looked very rushed, scared, as if she was being chased by somebody. So, sorry, I didn't mean to. I was suddenly stunned, so familiar, the familiar voice that even in my dreams I was searching. Amber? Amber, is that you? I held her shoulder and Amber raised her head in panic. Now, she seemed to break down sobbing as soon as she saw me. The pain of losing my lover has resurfaced. I hugged her tightly, afraid that she would disappear again. <laughs> After many questions, Amber briefly told me about the incident she'd encountered. Last year, her mother died in a work accident. Her father died early, leaving her alone with a small debt. Even though she got insurance, she couldn't pay it off. So for the past half year, she's had to hang out outside and do all sorts of things. This time, because of the overdue payment, the loan sharks came to her house to disturb and beat her to the point of fleeing everywhere. If this time I had found out about my mom and Amber's problem, I would have been able to protect her and get through the most challenging times with her. Temporarily putting aside the old story, I let her stay at my house, bringing her old clothes that I still kept for her to change. I'm sorry, all that time? It was because I was not good. You naturally said goodbye, and you still treat me as good as you did before. I applied the medicine to the bruise on her cheek, my heart like strangled by someone. It's not your fault, it's my fault. Suddenly, Amber jumped into my chest. I want you to know that I love you so much. Even when I left you, I still love you in the first place. I have no way of deceiving myself by not being moved by her words. The next day when I went to school, every time I was with Nina, I lost focus. Of course, I wouldn't tell her Amber's story. For the next week in the morning at school, I would spend time with her. When I get home, I leave it to Amber. That night, we ordered food to home, and Amber asked me, Steven, after all, what is the relationship between us? My fork handle stopped. I don't want to have no relationship with you, but I still stay here. I'm not that kind of girl. Amber, uh, give me some time. No need. If you don't make a decision, I will leave immediately. Amber stood up and walked past me, and at that moment, I grabbed her wrist. It's my birthday soon, 
On that day, show up as my girlfriend. Amber was so excited, she came and kissed me on the cheek. <laughs> Nina sighed, and my heart is still hesitant about saying goodbye to her. The day of the birthday party arrived. I didn't invite Nina. I told her there were a lot of people there, so she probably wouldn't like it. So we were going to celebrate privately the next day, and she said yes. I took Amber's hand into the hall to everyone's surprise. She was happy, but I was just confused. I don't know if my choice was oh. right. My parents must have been furious when they saw Amber, but in front of the guests, they didn't want to show it. I walked up to the stage, directing the microphone to say the first word for the party. Thank you all for coming to my birthday party. I hope you all have a great evening. Let me introduce to you my girlfriend, Amber. Below, there was silence, and there was applause, but my eyes caught an unremarkable person in the crowd. Nina, why are you here? I couldn't think of anything that would come running down to chase her. Running to the door of the hotel, I pulled her back. Nina, let me tell you something. What else do you want to say? Tell us to break up, right? I... Now, I finally understand why your friends are saying that. I have to admit that I am just like her. Didn't you say you weren't going to the party? I originally wanted to come here to surprise you. But in fact, the surprise was me, Steven. There's no need for you to talk. Let me finish. Let's break up. Finishing that, she got in a taxi and disappeared. After a while, I called her a lot and asked her classmates about her, but I've made the same mistake twice in my life. I moved into my parents' house, suffering so much that I couldn't care about Amber. Look at me like that. My mother went over and sighed. Steven, you're an adult, so I don't want to run your business, but that Amber girl isn't as good as you think. She handed me a bunch of documents and left. I slowly opened it and began to read everything in it. Anger, pain, and regret. Negative emotions flaring up. So my mother wasn't wrong. Amber agreed to go on a date with me just because she wanted to take advantage of me. A gold digger deals with anyone who benefits her. The moment I met her again was not a coincidence. It was all due to her deliberately arranging the act. How stupid I am. But compared to that, losing Nina makes me suffer a hundred <laughs> times more. You know, not every story has a happy ending. I broke up with Amber, quit my job at New York University, returning to help with the family's company living a life without Nina. It was not until later, on a visit to the countryside, that I saw her again. She was married and had children, and together with her husband, opened a small restaurant. I sat in front of her and her husband was busy serving food to the guests. Are you living well? Good, how about you? Do people like me deserve a good life? Don't say that, it's been a long time anyway. Now, I'm happy, so don't blame yourself. I nodded, and before I left, I wished her happiness.